welcome, 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 ladies and gentlemen, to the studio this evening. And as you can see, what we are going to be painting is this little dinghy that uh, I came across in my walks around the town that I live in. Uh, this is just docked up on a, on a little dock, uh, tucked away uh, nicely. I thought it was a cute little boat. I wanted to t do a painting of it. Uh, it looks as though my camera is freaking out just... A little bit as soon as I get a little color on the page I think that will go away and uh, this video is this painting is uh, several months old I've gotten this taken care of in future videos so I hope it's not too distracting for you uh, let's get a few of the particulars out of the way uh, before we get too far into this I'm painting with my M Graham watercolors. Uh, they're down in the lower right hand corner there. These are the ones I use most of the time as I'm painting. I'm painting uh, right now with uh, Dana Squirrel Quill Mop Brush. Uh, you can buy those on Amazon. I like them very much. I've used them uh, quite a bit. They are made out of squirrel hair. Uh, I am trying to find a nice uh, animal friendly brush made from synthetic hair. I haven't found one that I truly, truly like as much as this though. If anybody has any suggestions for me, please leave it in the comments down below. I would love to try one out to see uh, how good they are, how they stand up to, to these brushes. Uh, the paper that I'm using here this evening is Arches uh, cold pressed paper. It's uh, It's been torn from a larger sheet of paper. And uh, what I'm trying to do is just get in some basic color. Right, The water is not going to be exactly yellow or, or uh, <laughs> Payne's gray there. Uh, but I want to get a little life into it. So I'm getting a little warm uh color behind what i'm putting on now uh, and i'm hoping that all these colors are going to blend together and get happy and have a good time there we're going to end up putting another layer on top of this after it dries anyway so i'm not too worried just trying to get a base color on there i am basically avoiding or or i am avoiding the rocks uh, in the background at the very top of the painting a little bit. I want those to, to be done on their own just a touch. There we go. I'm going to quickly dry this off. And I should say the small glass that's in the lower left hand corner uh, is, a, is a remnant left over from a Twitch stream when I painted this originally. I hope that's not too distracting. I've taken that off. I don't particularly like that on there. So in future videos, uh, I take that off. It's not even there. Right, there's a big piling right here that this boat is tied up to. In fact, that the whole dock uh, wraps around or is, is attached to or somewhat attached to. Of course, the dock floats freely from this up and down. You can see that from the large metal structure in the reference photo that goes right around uh, this piling and I'm just putting in some uh, shadow here so it looks like oh maybe we've got something round there you go just put a little color down uh, and just draw it out and all of a sudden now we've got something that is a bit rounder uh, <clears throat> rather than just a flat color and if you do that when the uh, painting is all wet then uh, you get a nice uh, gradation, a nice blend uh, of all the colors. And here's the dock itself. It is all worn gray wood. I've been in the town I live in for 15 years, and this dock has, has not been, re none of the boards on this dock have been replaced. It's been the same thing since I've been here. Uh, it's actually a regular stop of mine as I walk throughout my town to stop down and uh, look off the sides. The, that boat isn't always there, but you can see into the water and see some really nice uh, sea life uh, uh, swimming underneath you. Some starfish 
<clears throat> lots of crabs from time to time. You can see uh, fish swimming by or often a ray that would swim by. And if you're lucky enough, uh, you can see an octopus. Saw one one time. It was pretty fantastic. Uh, but I haven't seen one since. Okay, so I've colored the entire painting with a, with a wash of paint. Uh, save the boat. And I'm gonna, I, I do that because I want the boat to stand out. All the other colors can kind of go and blend together. Uh, but I want the boat to stand out on its own. So I do like to paint the main subject of my paintings um, separate from everything else. It really does help them stand out just a bit more. The one thing you do have to worry about, or I have to worry about, because for me it's a, it's a pet peeve, is leaving too much uh, white right along the edges. We all have a tendency to to paint up to the edge but not quite get there and so we often leave white specks and spots or lines there and so when you're painting this way you really got to watch that all right and let's get into it now we're mixing a little gray so that means i'm going to paint the rocks behind the boat everything in the background back here <clears throat> and because i've got that lighter color on Below it, uh, there's going to be a little bit of lumin uh, warm luminosity coming through them. We'll do our best to knock some of that down, but that's going to help with some of the rocks. Uh, I do apologize for the way this video is flickering in and out of focus. Uh, I didn't realize it did it this badly as I was filming this. The first few minutes that I did of this, I didn't really notice it was this bad. Uh, I will say that I've gotten rid of the camera that this was filmed with. I use a totally different camera now and I don't believe I still have this issue. Or I should say at least in uh, videos that I've filmed since this one I've not noticed that I have this issue. Maybe I've just been completely oblivious to it. I don't think that's the case, but it is a possibility. <clears throat> All right, a little pole in the water there, maybe. Something to break up a few of the rocks that are here. But you can see we've got some definite shape of some rocks in, in no time at all, just by putting a little gray over top of them. <clears throat> and you can see how just that light layer, a little darker on the bottom, little lighter on the top and they've got some wonderful colors coming through them. Still using my Dana uh, mop brushes there. Uh, if I didn't mention they are squirrel hair brushes and I would ask you all once again if you've got a good recommendation for a comparable brush maybe one that is all synthetic please 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 leave comments um, down below. I'd like to get away from using animal hair, but I just find that uh, it feels better. Uh, the water comes off better. It holds a ton of water. <clears throat> but I'm willing to try something else. And hopefully I'll be able to find something that feels and acts uh, similar, very similar, uh, but is synthetic. <clears throat> And uh, so now I'm just putting on <clears throat> some of the colors of this rowboat. Uh, and, I, and I want to try to, uh, on, the front of, on the front of the bow there, I want to, on the bottom, I, I want to try to leave in some of the stripes of the slats. And that's why I painted it in, in, in kind of that, <clears throat> those bars. So you can see exactly how... Those are going to come through and how they're starting to uh, give shape to the hull of this little dinghy. I guess it's still a hull, isn't it? It's got to be a hull, even though it's even though it's tiny. All ships have hulls, don't they? I think they do. 
uh, as you can tell, my vast knowledge of nautical terms means I'm a big sailor. I'm always out on the water. Um, <laughs> I haven't been on the I haven't been on the water in years, but I do love to walk next to it and look out and ponder uh, at it. Uh, it's it's wonderful. I'm going to be coming out with uh, a lot of other videos of things in and around where I live. I live in a a pretty picturesque part of the country where uh, there's a lot of wildlife, a lot of scenery, a lot of rocky coastline, many boats, many fishermen, fisher boats. Uh, and I'd like to uh, bring some of that to everybody. And in addition, I like to encourage people to paint what's around them. That's something that I've been trying to do a lot of for the past couple of years is to paint things in and around where I'm at and where I live and really uh, I feel that if you're painting something that means something to you you'll do you'll you'll feel differently about it you'll probably do a better job with it and uh, when you're done with it it'll mean more to you uh, and so I've been trying to do that and I think I've done a pretty good job with all of my paintings and uh, <clears throat> and I enjoy my painting a bit more so it, uh, I encourage anybody else to do that okay so uh, I've switched to a silver black velvet brush here and I like these brushes I don't love them if I had a slightly smaller mop brush I would use it here but uh, these silver black velvet brushes they do really come to a nice point and uh, they can get in some really fine details so that's why I'm using it here <clears throat> and I think I've talked about the silver black velvet brushes before they're very popular I get it uh, for not a whole lot of money you get a very nice brush uh, to me, there's just something a little bit wrong. They don't feel quite the same as as other brushes. I think they feel a bit stiff. Maybe that's it. Uh, but they but they do hold a lot of water. They do let the water off your brush very nicely. Uh, I can see why they are quite a popular brush. Having said that, uh, having said that, I've moved them off of <laughs> off of my uh, desk recently. Uh, they'll probably make a return at some point in time, uh, but that's how it goes sometimes. I'm using them here, and I don't have any complaints about them. <clears throat> All right, we're about halfway through this painting now, and you can see it's really taken shape. Uh, even if we had to stop here or somewhere close to here, well, you'd really get the feeling of, of a nice painting. Right, we've got some stones, in, some big rocks in the back back there that are the shoreline really. Uh, we've got a nice area in front, the dock uh, that, we're, that, we're, that we're standing on. And this beautiful little dinghy back here, it's got some real interest to it. And as we keep adding on to this, we're just going to keep building up a bit more and a bit more uh, some of the niceties of this dinghy. And it's really going to take on a whole life of its own. It's going to get only get better the more we paint uh, and the more we build up with this. Now, I've got two colors of gray right back there. The back seat and the back transom uh, that I had just painted. And I didn't paint them together. I could have painted them together, but I didn't. And uh, I like to paint when I have to, when I have a very similar color right next to another color that's uh, very similar, I guess, <laughs> however you say that. Uh, I like to let one dry just a little bit so you get a nice hard edge between the two. So even though the color is very similar, you definitely get the feeling that they're two distinct pieces. Uh, that's why I do that. Okay, just just dropping in a few details here and there. Whoa, I don't know what happened with my camera there. That really 
went a little wonky. As I remember it, uh, I painted this a week or so before my whole computer blew up. It didn't actually blow up, but it just kind of gave up the ghost and stopped working for me. And uh, I had to <clears throat> had to get rid of it and get a new computer. That was not a fun time. All right, here's a little knot here, uh, probably holding the boat. Uh, but it could have been a knot that was holding a different boat. Maybe it's dread uh, dropped down into the water down there. We we don't know. Uh, we can't tell exactly where this one goes. But it's a it's a cool little knot there. So let's just put that on, and it's just going to give a little extra detail uh, to this. All right, there's a big crack right in there. Right, I think it's a little dark. It's very dark in the in the photograph, but given the relative darkness of the rest of this, I think that's a little dark. I I I believe I come back and kind of help that a little bit, maybe take a little bit of that color off, or equalize the colors a little bit. But uh, I could be wrong. It may just dry a little bit better, uh, way lighter than I'm remembering. All right, and I want to add, I definitely want to add some color to this piling. Uh, that's going to bring it much closer to us. And of course, down at the bottom down here, uh, where it's probably been splashed with water and constantly damp, it's going to be a lot darker. Uh, maybe it's got some, I don't know, all kind of stuff growing on it a little bit there. And this and this bar that's holding the dock on, well, it's it's seen better days too, so let's... Let's give it a little bit of extra color on there. I don't know, something like that. I just blend it a little bit. There we go. That looks pretty good. And all in all, the painting is starting to come together. Mixing a bit of gray here. All kinds of colors I'm throwing in there. Got some blues, got some greens, a little neutral tint, a touch of red. It's going to be a nice dark color. Oh, I'm I'm making a dark water color. I've switched back to the mop brushes. Uh, this is just because it holds a lot of paint. I can cover a lot of ground with it as I go. Uh, not to mention a nice big brush feels good in your hands. I probably don't need to go back and re-dip my brush quite as much as I am there, but uh, I want to make sure that I've got a good amount of paint on here. There we go, just going right around the boat, right around those rocks. I want to make sure those are all, uh, they're going to stand out is what they're going to do with that dark color right next to them. That's not exactly the color of the water in the reference photo, and that's okay. And the reference photo color is, uh, the water color is much greener if you look at it. Um, and maybe I should call the harbor patrol or the harbor master or something. It looks like we've got some, <laughs> something growing in there. I don't know. Uh, but, uh, but it's okay because we're going we're gonna to make this color of our water the color that we want to make it and uh, we're going to make it dark because our boat is going to be light and that's going to help our boat to pop and stand out and I'm trying to keep every a wet edge so wherever I paint on here it's not going to really get dry and I can paint as much as I want to or as much as I need to I can go back in and add a little color here. I can take a little color away there. However, I think I need to, but I need to keep that whole area wet or wet enough, I should say. Quickly mixing uh, my colors. And there we go. That's starting to look good. I got a little bloom forming, you can see. In the corner, there we go. Good catch. We just grab and pull that out a little bit. There we go. There's my Dana brush. 
<clears throat> and that dark water really makes those rocks in the back stand out quite a bit. Yes, I've got three of these brushes. Thank you for showing those. <laughs> I really do. These are really nice brushes. I, I don't know why. Uh, I don't know why anybody needs to pay more for a mop brush. Um, I bought these on Amazon, forty dollars or so. Fantastic brushes. And uh, now with that commercial done, I'm not I'm not getting paid by Dana or anything like that. But uh, Dana, if you are listening. <laughs> I'm here. Uh, so let's keep going with what we've got here. Right, I'm going to darken everything around the motor mount in the back. Doesn't need to be much, just needs to be enough to set it off. I've got a little hole where the keel goes in this little guy. Just a black line, really. A couple of shadow lines around it. I said we were, we were almost done with it before. We didn't have to do too much to it. We really don't have that much to do with this boat. It's, it looks good enough uh, on its own, but we do have a few other things that we need to do. All right, I'm going to get my rigger brush out here. All right, there's a, there's a rope that's laying right there. Could make it any color. I could make it uh, a a yellow ochre. Could make it uh, a, a gray yellow ochre. Could make it as dark as a sepia or a burnt umber if you want. If I wanted to, but it looks to me like this rope has been uh, on this boat for quite a while, and any real color that it has has kind of been taken away and replaced with some grayness. So all the ropes on here have a gray tint to them. All right, what do we need to do? There's a little, a little, uh, a bag or a ball, something to keep it from bashing against the side of the, the dock or the sailboat that it belongs to. Oh yes, yeah, so we've got some work to do here. Let's get a little wood color going here. It doesn't have to be as gray. We have a lot of gray in the rest of the painting, so. If we have a couple of colors that'll help to warm this a little bit, that'd be great. There we go. Just a little bit here and a little bit there. I want to leave a little bit of an edge between uh, the, the board right on the edge and the second board in, the, the big flat plank, uh, just because uh, I want, I want to, I definitely want them to look like two boards. Don't want them to look like one. We've got it there. I'm going to leave it ish like that. <laughs> Again, I'm sorry about this camera. This camera is, uh, it's, uh, I promise you, it's bothering me as much as it's bothering you. Uh, when I look at this, all right, we've got a little reflection from this rowboat here, this little dinghy. I'm just going to drop that on just to make it a little bit darker than the surrounding colors. And now uh, just a bit of uh, just a bit of a shadow, maybe call it even a reflection of some of the water on the side of this boat. It's just a really pale blue. Uh, I believe I, I used cobalt blue in here to do this. Just a little bit here and a little bit there. Uh, uh, enough color. Again, to uh, give a little shape and dimension to the, to the boat, but not so much that it's going to define the shape of the boat. Uh, and what I mean by that is, I don't want to, re or I said, should they redefine the shape of the boat? I just want it to go with the shape of the boat, show that it's there. It's not just a big white area, right? That white area has a bit of color on it. and. Uh, and, and that color that I've, I've decided for me is that cobalt color. There we go. I've moved the camera enough. I think that's starting 
Uh, to make it a little bit better, maybe I should have moved it down there from the beginning. There we go. That that dark line is a little too dark for me. I'm going to pull a little bit of that color off. All right, we've got some big scores and scratches in this wood. That wood's been around a long time. There we go. Defining the edges of these boards just, just a little bit more. There, there. Now we've got two boards over there instead of just one for sure. Uh, back to my rigger, trying to put a few lines in here. <clears throat> and we're nearly done. Oh, let me rub my face. Ooh, take a deep breath, Michael. Take a deep breath. Okay, for those of you who have stuck with me this long, I very much appreciate that. Uh, I have links down below to my social media. I haven't been as active as I've wanted to be in the, in the past few months. I've been, uh, for obvious reasons, stressed out by this whole virus thing that's going around uh, and a little overworked because of it. I'm going to get back on it. I promise you I'm going to be doing more with social media. I've got links to my website down there. I've got links to my Etsy store down below. And um, if you would like, I've got a link, I believe, to my coffee account. You can uh, buy me a cup of coffee. All the money from the coffee goes right to the studio to help keep it going, keep it uh, running. At the moment, I'm trying to fundraise so I can put walls in my studio. What I have now are blue tarps hanging from the ceiling, kind of <laughs> breaking off my space from the rest of uh, my garage. So if you'd like to do that, um, please feel free uh, to donate. Every bit would be appreciated. If you like this, uh, leave a comment down below. You can leave a comment about the video if you like. I know it's frustrating. I, I apologize for that. Like I said, I'm not wild about it, but that camera is no longer in use. I've gotten rid of it. I've got a new camera and I believe it's much better than, uh, than the camera that I, that's currently being used. <laughs> It's somebody subscribed to me on Twitch. That's what that was that popped up there. Uh, and with that, I've got a couple of extra little things to do here, right? A couple of lines inside the boat. You can see where some of the wood is in the boat uh, as it's been built and put together. Um, and uh, what else can I say to you? Uh, I'm hoping to bring back my live paintings. Uh, I'm trying to figure out the best day of the week uh, to do that. I've got some big changes coming in my day job. And I don't want to commit to a certain day uh, not knowing what my day job is going to entail. So I've got to hold off on that for just a small amount of time. Uh, but but uh, uh, that will be coming up soon. We're going to be doing that uh, here in the fall. I uh, will be doing another holiday series again uh, this year. And hopefully you all will be able to stay tuned for that. That's what I've got for you all today. Thank you all so much for being here in the studio with me tonight. I appreciate it. And we'll see you back here again another time. All right, thanks. Bye-bye.